10K MOI is the sum of the MOI from the heel toe plane and some other plane that manufacturers do not specify. The reason why manufacturers talk about 10K MOI is because realistically, there's not many improvements that they've been doing over the past couple years. What I find interesting about this chart is that every year, manufacturers have talked about how their drivers are super more forgiving, and then you can clearly see the RBZ, Aero Burner, and almost the M2 were worse in MOI versus the 2009 Burner. I don't know why TaylorMade also didn't list their other models like the RBZ Stage 2 or whatever, or like the M5, so whatever. And I think it's funny that they went from the Sim 2 Max and they nerfed the total MOI to do the Stealth and probably the Stealth 2. Total MOI was measured by My Golf Spy in 2019. They didn't really care about measuring total MOI um, in the prior years. But you can clearly see that manufacturers have been hanging around in the 4,000 to 5,000 MOI um, for the heel toe plane for quite a while. This is 2018. Here's 2017. This is 2016, and you can see the slider down there. You know, not really a great driver head. Um, I was at like 3,700. And this is the 2015 one. So the scales, they're not always the same for the charts, the scales. But you can clearly see that there are drivers from 2015, almost 10 years ago, that had like 5,000 MOI. What I always find interesting about every time they test these MOI results they never post the actual numbers, they don't post the head weight, and they hit the ball in a different spot. Like, why wouldn't you just use a fucking robot to do this? Doesn't make any sense. Oh yeah, that's right, because it's pointless. Your general rule of thumb for MOI is that your heel-toe MOI is going to be larger than front to back because drivers, according to the USGA, have to be wider than they are deep. Manufacturers don't care about MOI that much because they still have a spectrum of range and they pretty much still have excellent performance in the hands of a lot of people. And they even have this whole idea about moving the center of mass closer to the face, which decreases MOI, in order to slightly bump ball speed or affect backspin. The other thing that'll bump up MOI is obviously weight. If you go back to my putter MOI video where I show you the differences in MOI between my blade without weights with 20 grams and with 240 grams, um, it's pretty substantial. And driver head weight has slowly been creeping up over the last few years. There's a couple models on the market today where the head weights are 208 grams, which is pretty crazy. And you can see that light blue Wilson over there and to the left. The reason why it's below 4,000 MOI is because the head weight's 192 grams and everybody else is like 200 to 205. Now, even though those drivers have a lower MOI value, does that mean that they're bad? The answer is no. They're very capable of having excellent performance and tour professionals have used worse quality drivers according to this chart for years and they've had excellent driving performance. Why is that? Well, that's because MOI has a diminishing return both in value and as you strike closer to the center of mass of the club head, which just goes to show you're going to make more leaps and bounds for your driver and iron play and wedge play and putting if you hit a lot closer to where the center of mass is as opposed to praying and hoping to God that the technology is going to save your terrible ass technique. It will never, ever do that. The other interesting thing is that MOI is not going to save you if the club doesn't even fit you, right? So that's like totally out of the question. So would I worry about 10K MOI? The answer is no. Take it from TaylorMade themselves. They went from the Sim 2 Max down to the Stealth. They hurt MOI and they still sold it as a better driver. So I guess you should take their word at it. Maybe they're just not being honest or maybe in a way they are.